Tens of thousands of fires have ravaged parts of Sumatra and Kalimantan in the past two months. Indonesia estimates some 1.7 million hectares have been affected. The economic costs may rise well into the billions, and the country's greenhouse gas emissions could reach record levels. Scientists from the Center for International Forestry Research, C4, found high levels of noxious chemicals in the haze. Since the fires started, more than half a million people have developed respiratory symptoms. Seasonal rains have begun, but 2015 is an El Nino year, so the threat is far from over. Some parts of this country are going to be naturally drier in February and March. Um, the eastern Kalimantan, parts of, of, of Sumatra, and in, in an El Nino year, that, that dry season is going to be even more pronounced than it normally is. So we can expect that, that there will be another uh, surge of fires. Putting out the flames is an enormous task, even with international support. Science can play a vital role in ensuring the right measures are put into place and less effective steps are avoided. The, the reason that the government is digging ditches is to get access to water, and, but that water comes from within the peatland. You know, the peat is, is organic matter that has a very high water table in it that slows down decomposition. That's why the peat accumulates. When you dig a ditch, all that water comes out and into the ditch, which means that the peat now is, is drier, deeper in, in the, the profile, so it burns more. C4 is working with experts from Palankaraya University to measure the long-term effects of drainage and fire on the peatland. They've installed 22 field-based tools, known as RSET MH, to show what's happening underground. Once we're doing measurement in the field, so we can read the, the elevation change uh, caused by fire, if there was fire before. And we can aggregate or extrapolate in our study area uh, how much carbon loss are due to the pit fires. And the second objective is we want to see the carbon loss due to the drainage. So we want to see how many carbon loss are uh, caused by, by drainage because of the below ground processes. This research is just one example of how science can support strategies to help overcome the problem. But Versho warns that long-term solutions need to be implemented sooner rather than later. This fire and haze event was, was totally predictable. This problem can be solved. It's going to require strong political will. It's going to require a lot of people doing things differently. It also requires the incentives and, 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 and the creating the opportunities for people to do something different, to move off of these peatlands and still find a, a, a way to make a living, to, make, to, to ensure their livelihoods and to ensure the future of their, their families. Um, and that's what this is really all about. It, it, it has to be much more of a human story here. and, and um, Solving it is really going to have to put, be, mean putting people at the, at the center of the solution. Versho says long-term sustained finance is needed to provide these new opportunities for communities and to protect and restore forests and peatlands, something high on the agenda of the upcoming UN Climate Change Conference in Paris.